Welcome again, guys, to That History Dude. I'm your host, and I will be talking about Robert the Bruce. Or better, actually, the Bruce family. We'll get to Robert the Bruce eventually. So, first and foremost, Robert the Bruce, the first Lord of Annandale, came along with his brothers, William de Bruce and Peter de Bruce, from Normandy, along with many other Normans, uh, in the, with William the Conqueror and the Norman invasion of England. Robert de Bruce was instrumental in helping William the Conqueror, and because of that, he was granted uh, Annandale and became the first lord. He married a woman named Agnes and had three children. Adam de Bruce, the second Lord of Skelton. Robert II de Bruce, second Lord of Annandale. And Agatha de Bruce. Agatha de Bruce married Ralph Fitzribald of Middleham. Adam de Bruce had a child. Adam II de Bruce, the third Lord of Skelton. I'm going to continue on with this line first before we get on to the main line of the Annandale Bruces. So Adam de Bruce, the third Lord of Skelton, married Weta the Arches, and together they had Peter de Bruce, the fourth Lord of Skelton, and Isabel de Bruce. Isabel married Henry de Percy, and Peter married Joan, the daughter of John Constable, of Chester Baron of Halton and Alice. She was the uh, sole uh, claimant of the father's lands. So these lands were added on to Peter de Bruce's, uh, the fourth Lord of Skeleton, made his uh, lands even larger. So from Peter the Bruce, his son, Peter II the Bruce, fifth Lord Skelton, married Hawes de Lancaster, heiress of Kendall. The father of Hawes was Gilbert Fitzrinefred, Lord of Kendall. And the mother was Heloise de Lancaster. Now, why Hawes took the mother's last name? I do not know, but the lands were given to Hawes. She was the heiress of Kendall, and which would eventually be given to Peter the Bruce, Lord of Skelton, and would add on to his domain. Now, Peter the Bruce had many children, but had one son. Peter the Third of the Bruce, sixth Lord of Skelton. His daughters, Margaret, Lucia, Agnes, Joan, and Catherine, all married into notable families. But because Peter the Third of the Bruce, the sixth Lord of Skelton, died with no heirs. His lands were then split amongst his sisters and their husbands taking that land because of um, the different rights of men and women back then in the British Isles. Um, it was very rarely that you saw women in their own right be countesses or, um, you know, female Jarls or or anything, you know, major landowners like that. When they married, their husband took possession of those lands. Now, it is funny to note that Hilaria de Molly, who married Peter 
the third of the Bruce, the sixth Lord of Skelton. Her half brother married Joan de Bruce, Peter the Molly, Sheriff of Northamptonshire. So they were related in that aspect. Now, these lines all produced children, but because I'm trying to keep with the paternal lines of the Bruce family, I did not add them. Here, the male paternal line of the Lord of Skeletons died out, and the lands were then given to, as I said, the sisters. So Margaret, who became the heiress of Kendall, married William de Ross, Lord of Wark. Lucia married Sir Marmaduke de Thwang, Lord of Kilton. Agnes married Lord Walter de Falkenberg. Joan married the half sibling of Hilaria, Peer the Molly, Sheriff of North of the Shire. And then Catherine married John Balliol of Carlton. And again, if you know anything of the Scottish Wars of Independence, the Colmans and the Balliols and the Bruces were very, very prominent families in that time period. So with that said, let's go back up to the main line. Robert II the Bruce, the second Lord of Annandale, married Euphemia de Amel. And together they had Robert III, the Bruce of Annandale, William de Bruce the Third, Lord of Annandale, Bernard de Bruce of Annandale, and Euphemia de Bruce. Now, the elder brother was Robert III the Bruce of Annandale. He was expected to succeed his father, Robert II. But he unfortunately died prematurely to his father and also died with no heirs. So he would have continued if he had heirs and such. And it would have been a stronger family because he married Isabel Dunkeld, the illegitimate daughter of William Dunkeld, the Lion, King of Scots. This would have brought the Bruces closer with the kings of Scotland during uh, the Dunkeld period. But they never produced an heir. And that line was cut. Um, Euphemia de Bruce married Evo Kirkpatrick of Closeburn, a minor lord. But William de Bruce, the third lord of Annandale, who did take over for his father, he married Christina Nicutrid, Countess of Dunbar. She was the daughter of Uhtred McFergus, Lord of Galloway which at this period of time, Galloway was its own separate petty kingdom, much like much of the uh, petty kingdoms of Ireland, because Ireland never uh, unified as one whole entity. Scotland was also fractured during this time period. You had the Kingdom of the Isles and Man, you had Galloway, uh, Strathclyde, and you had Alba. Now, Alba, Strathcl Strathclyde, and Galloway, they were Gaelic holdings. Kingdom of the Isles and Man, of what we know today, the Hebrides, uh, they were Norse Gael. So, following this union... They had four children. William de Bruce, John de Bruce, Robert de Bruce, and Euphemia de Bruce. Now, from Uhtred McFergus, Lord of Galloway, he did have a son, and then he had a daughter who did end up leading to Patrick here who was the fifth, and then he lost the earldom, and then he gained it again, so he was the sixth earl of Dunbar. Um, but I did not make that connection 
here because they were not, uh, it's not direct paternal line. Uh, and I was trying to just focus on the Bruce's, as I said. So, Robert the Bruce, the noble, as he's known, the fourth Lord of Annandale, married Isabel of Huntington. Now, Isabel is also a descendant of William and his daughter, Isabel. Well, they're all part of the same family. Uh, through his son. Uh, not much is known about William the Bruce or John the Bruce. There's no known issue uh, and no errors or, or any of that sort. So this union had three children. Beatrice the Bruce. Robert the Bruce, the competitor, the fifth Lord of Annandale, and Bernard the Bruce, Lord of Cunnington and Exton. Now, Bernard the Bruce, his lands were in England. He married Alice de Beauchamp, and he had Sir Bernard the Bruce, second Lord of Cunnington and Exton, and John the Bruce of Thrapston. Married Agatha, and you have Sir Bernard Bruce the Third, Lord of Cunnington and Exton, John Bruce of Cunnington and Exton, and then Sir Bernard Bruce the Fourth, Lord of Cunnington and Exton. His line died out here, and Bernard Bruce of Thrapston died out here. The English line of Bruce's died out with these male heirs, not much else is known of these uh, Bruce's. Now, Robert the Bruce, the competitor, married Isabella de Clare of Gloucester. This was, again, as I said before, the beginning of the Wars of Independence. That's why he's known the competitor, because he's competing for the throne. He has a legitimate stake in becoming king of Scotland through his mother, Isabel Huntington. And, I mean, if you really want to go back through also his great aunts, which would have been Isabel. So, he had a claim. He would cede, um, I don't want to say he would cede the claim, but he would not actively fight for it for long. He did uh, want peace in Scotland, so he was happy in his station as Lord of Annandale. So Robert the Bruce... And Isabella de Clare of Gloucester together had Robert the Bruce VI, Lord of Annandale, and Earl of Carrick. He became Earl of Carrick because he married Marjorie, the third Countess of Carrick. Now, also, Marjorie, she has a tie to the Stuarts. Marjorie's uh, mother was a Stuart. Her grandfather was uh, the third high steward of Scotland. Um, Isabel de Bruce married Sir John Fitzmarmaduke. And yes, I understand that this Marmaduke and this Marmaduke are similar, but they are not related. Uh, some sources say they might be kin, uh, most sources, though, agree that it, they just happen to have the same name. And then Richard the Bruce became Lord of Riddle. Richard the Bruce became Lord of Riddle, but he had no issue, so the lands reverted back to his father when he died, because he did die before his father did. And then when the father died, 
lands went to Robert. Now, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. Robert the Bruce, the sixth Lord of Enendo, and Earl of Carrick had multiple children. I had to fit them in here all like so to, to get them on the same line. So he had a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven children. With Christina the Bruce being the oldest. Christina the Bruce married Sir Andrew de Moray, who along uh, goes down to the Murray lines. Matilda the Bruce married Hugh, the fourth Earl of Ross, and we get the Earls of Ross this way. Isabel became Queen Consort of Norway. She married Eric II Magnuson, King of Norway, and together they had Ingeborg, Eric's daughter, who was a very, very dominant female politician, landowner, you know, Jarl, female Jarl, Duchess uh, in Norway and in Finland. Uh, she married a man, but he died early before her. She never remarried, and she held the lands, Duchess of Upland, Orland, and Finland. And then we have Robert, the first Bruce, King of Scotland. Nigel Bruce, Edward Bruce, the fourth Earl of Carrick and High King of Ireland. Mary Bruce, Lady Margaret Bruce, Sir Thomas Bruce, Alexander Bruce, and Lady Elizabeth Bruce. Now, Sir Thomas Bruce, Alexander Bruce, and Nigel Bruce all died during the Wars of Independence. Uh, the Scottish Independence. They died during Robert's Wars. Um, trying to protect the sisters. Lady Margaret Bruce died soon after the wars. Um, not much is known about Lady Elizabeth Bruce. Mary Bruce married first Alexander Fraser of Touch Fraser and Cowie. And did have children. They became Frasers. She also married Neil Campbell of Menstry and also had children with them, with him. Uh, Campbell children. So that's a different paternal line. I did not obviously continue. I just put their clans. Edward the Bruce, the fourth Earl of Carrick and High King of Ireland, married Isabella Strathbogey of Athol, who, if you remember in the Jarls of Orkney video, the line, the, uh, the Earls of Athol, she does descend from that line. And then we have Robert the Bruce, who first married Isabella of Mar, and we have Marjorie Bruce from that marriage. The second marriage was Elizabeth de Burr, who we have Elizabeth Bruce, Margaret Bruce, Maud Bruce, John Bruce, and David II Bruce, King of Scotland. Elizabeth Bruce married Sir William Molifunt. Margaret Bruce married William de Moravia, the 5th Earl of Sutherland. And again, also from my other video, if you remember Fruskin de Moravia and the Murrays, the Morays, all iterations of the same name, he is also related to him. Thomas Isaac married Maud Bruce. 
So David firstly married Joan, Joan Plantagenet of England. They were betrothed when they were children to try to keep peace between Scotland and England. But Joan was raised, you know, separately away from her family. She did travel a lot to England and was away from David for most of her life. When war arose again and David was in uh, prison, Joan was in England. When the war was over and David was uh, ransomed and released, uh, they broke off the marriage. David then went ahead and married Margaret Drummond, and still, no issue with either lines. David died with no sons and no heirs. This led to almost a succession crisis, but luckily, through Robert the Bruce, the first Bruce, uh, his first uh, daughter, Marjorie, married Walter Stewart, the sixth high steward of Scotland, and the crown of Scotland went to Robert II Stuart, King of Scotland, thus beginning the Stuart line of Scottish kings, which would mix and then eventually uh, join the English crown and we would have the Stuart kings of Scotland and England. Now, I want to bring your attention to the other line here, Robert Bruce Lord Lidsdale. This Robert Bruce was a bastard. So I made him straight go to through Robert. Uh, nothing's really known of his mother. Robert the Bruce, King of Scotland, did acknowledge him as his son and grant him lands. So that's why he has the last name and he has lands. He's a lord. So Robert the Bruce, Lord of Lidsdale, it is through this Robert that the male line of Bruce's continues to this day through the bastard. How ironic. But then again, I mean, that's how most lines are continued through to present day. Uh, so Robert had Sir Thomas Bruce, the first Baron of Clackmannan, married Marjorie Chartois, and together they had Robert Bruce, the second Baron of Clackmannan, who married Isabel Stewart of Fife, the daughter of Robert Stewart of Doors Deer. She goes up, this is a line connected to the fourth Heights, uh, fourth high steward of Scotland. So they are distant cousins. Then together, they have Robert the Bruce, the third Baron of Clockman. Then David the Bruce, the fourth Baron of Clockman, and marries Jean Stewart of Intermeath, the daughter of John Stewart of Intermeath and Lorne, and Isabel MacDougall. So Clan Sorley, uh, Clan MacDougall, uh, does come into play here. And the father, John Stewart of Intermeath, is also closely, re if I'm not mistaken, these two are cousins or uh, they're like first cousins or second cousins. Uh, but again, I will also be doing a video of Details video with the actual layout of how all these Stuarts are related. So, this union, we have Patrick Bruce and John Bruce, the fifth Baron of Clackmannan. And John Bruce married Is Elizabeth Stuart of Rilseth, daughter of Sir David Stuart Rilseth. Uh, this one is a minor line of the Stuart branch, but nonetheless, another Stuart. And then here's where John Bruce 
breaks down to different lines. He has male line here and male line here. David the Bruce, six Baron Clackmanin, Mary Janet Sterling, mm-hmm. and then Marriott Harris. Mm-hmm. Rob the Bruce, the first of Coltman Lindy, Mary Janet Barber, and Matilda Bruce, married Sir John Marshall. Rob the Bruce, the first of Coltman Lindy, had uh, two sons. Hector Bruce of Coltman Lindy and Lucas Bruce the second of Coltman Lindy, second Lord of Coltman Lindy. Mary Christina Ruthven then had John Bruce the third of Coltman Lindy. John Bruce would go on to have seven children with multiple male lines continuing on to this day. David the Bruce the sixth Baron of Clackman and had Robert Bruce of Wright. Who married Isabel Lindsay, then had David Bruce Wright, Janet Arnois, and then James Bruce Wright, John Bruce of Fingask, William Bruce of Fingask and Wright, and the male line continues on. Sir David the Bruce, the seventh Baron of Clackman, and this is where the line splits into multiple lines, multiple, mul- multiple lines. I'm going to have to do another video on the Bruces uh, for the rest going to present day. John Bruce, the Master of Clackmanon. He was called the Master of Clackmanon because he died prematurely to his father, so he never inherited the title and had a numbered uh, lord, right? So he died, but he did marry Margaret Murray. And yes, he married Margaret Murray and his son married a Margaret Murray. They're not the same Margaret Murrays, if you guys are wondering. Rob the Bruce Dayth of Clackman did not marry his mother. They just happened to both be named Margaret Murray. Yes, they're Murrays, so they are somehow related to each other, but they're not the same person. Rob the Bruce Dayth of Clackman in that male line continues on um but the most important line actually comes from one of sir david bruce's other children he had eight other children with numerous male lines that continued on today along with the current clan leader for the bruce family sir andrew bruce the 11th earl vilgen who was born in 1924 and is right now 98 years old and still alive from the making of this video. So the clan head of Clan Bruce in Scotland can be traced through this line right here going to Sir David Bruce and going all the way up through the bastard of Robert the Bruce, Robert Bruce Lord of Lidsdale. So as I said before, this is the end because I did not have much room else to work and continue on. This man had a lot of children with a lot of different lines continuing on and there were other lines here as well. So I decided that I will make a whole separate video from this time period from Sir David Bruce continuing on to present day. Another 500 years of... of paternal lines so thank you for joining me in the bruce family uh tree part one um if you like this video don't forget to check out my other videos i have the yarls of orkney and i have summer leads family tree and i will be making more clan family trees mcdougall's mcallister's mcdonald's mccrory's etc Thank you.